a passionate instigator and dynamic problem solver, Dr. Kevin Ross Emery, the host of the Dr. Kevin Radio Show, will be taking you outside the box, behind the curtain, and identifying the load of BS we are fed every day. And now, Dr. Kevin. Dr. Kevin. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Dr. Kevin Show here on Ohm Times, where we are changing the world. Wait for it. One ohm at a time. And here on the Dr. Kevin Show, we like to challenge everyone and everything with the goal of expanding your reality. Uh, as always, if you are joining us for the first time, this is a live call-in show, so you can be part of the conversation by calling in at 202-570-7057, or you can come to uh, facebook.com backslash mydrkevin, uh, and you'll see tonight's guest, you'll see tonight's guest website and how to contact her and all the write-ups about her, and you can post, because I'll be monitoring that Facebook page, and so if you don't want to call in, if you're a little voice shy, but you still have an opinion you would like to share or a question you'd like to ask, you can do that. Well, you are there on Dr. On Kevin, Kevin, my Dr. Kevin, make sure you like Dr. my page because like I'm a likable guy. Uh, so make sure you like my page. As always, we uh, start with uh, what we call, what I call my hot under the collar. Hot, I, well, what I call, <laughs> it's either I, my hot topic, I'm sorry, I'm either hot under the collar about the topic or it makes me warm and fuzzy. Once we've shared the topic, we'll introduce tonight's guest and then we will see what she thinks about today's topic and then we will get this show under the road. So, my hot topic today uh, really has to do with all of this that's going on over here. And my guest tonight is from England. So I'm gonna, I'm, I don't know if she's, how much of the loop she's been in of the disaster that's been going on the last few days uh, that started with Roseanne Barr making a highly racist comment about a, uh, a senior advisor who was part of the Obama uh, administration. Administration. Uh, one I will not repeat. Uh, you can find it all over the place if you place. would you like to. Would like uh, to. But uh, and but ABC and canceling her show, even though it was show, getting it was fabulous getting ratings fabulous and it was signed to come back. To come they basically back. said, basically no, said no, 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 uh, no. Uh, we're not going to support uh, that kind of racism. People become the impact words and. How, they're, how people are supporting uh, or, or, or insulting people or lack of supporting, I should say, I guess. Uh, and so that being said, the big brouhaha, she made a very racist comment, uh, the, I think, uh, you know, and then a couple of days later, Samantha B on Full Frontal makes a really vulgar comment about Ivanka Trump. Because, because Ivanica ha was on the uh, picture on the social media feed, uh, holding their child and saying how precious her child was. And it came out very close to the U.S. government admitting that they lost 1,500 uh, immigrant children that they took away from their parents and stuck in places. And now they don't know where they are, but they separated those, uh, those children from those family. And she went after, as many people on social media did, about Ivanica. And, you know, why was she not... Talking to her dad, to her dad. Our, bully in chief. our bully in chief, uh, about that. Uh, so, uh, so the reason I'm making this so hot comment is because now people are saying, is the, is it, is a really vulgar comment calling somebody way over the line, inappropriate names on air, um, instead of just presenting the case of that you think that this person is being hypocritical. It was just vulgar. It's words and language I'm certainly not going to repeat. Uh, 
Is that the same as making a racist comment? Should it be treated the same way? I kind of like to hear from the listeners on this. My feeling is that they were two inappropriate comments that were made. And though they were different, they were both still really inappropriate. And if they don't represent the morals and values of the station that's hosting the show, they need to get rid of them. Uh, they got rid of Roseanne. They canceled her show because it was very racist and they were afraid of the backlash. Uh, and that was a decision made by Disney, the parent company. Should Turner Broadcasting get full frontal? Should they say, Samantha B, you crossed the line and we don't want to support vulgar name calling, really immature language attacks uh, on the first daughter or on anybody? Is it OK? Now, I, in choosing this topic, I chose this topic for a couple of reasons. One, because I, it was my hot topic. But the other thing, that, the other reason that I chose it was because tonight's guest is from the UK. And I've been back and forth several times to England. I spent time there. I spent four months there a couple of years ago. And when I spent that four months a couple of years ago, um, I fell very much in love with a show there that's, I believe, still on the air called The Last Leg uh, and a couple of other shows. But that was definitely my favorite one. I watched it regularly when I could get it on BBC. Uh, and they are much more brutal in England. They are much more brutal uh, than we were here. Um, unfortunately, we're changing in that direction. So now to bring on today's guest. Uh, today's guest is Katie West. Katie West. Uh, Katie West lives oneness and unconditional love, and she loves assisting people who are interested in giving themselves back to themselves, helping them restore their own inner balance, peace, joy, and harmony. Katie says, if a box existed, then she would love to talk outside of it. But in Katie's world, there is no box. She has an interesting perception on life. Some could say she sees and experiences everything backwards. Living from this perspective has had its ups and downs, as you can quite imagine. But the message she'd love to share is there is nothing wrong with the world. Everything is perfectly ticking away nicely. Uh, you can find out more, or you again, you can call in and ask Katie questions, or you can find out more about her at www.groupofone.org. Katie, are you there? Katie, are you there? Hello. Hi, Kevin. Yes, I am. Hello. Uh, ah, Katie, hi, are you hi, there? Katie, I don't know what happened. Are you there? I don't know what happened. Yes, I'm here. It's 11-11 and I'm here. <laughs> oh, good. So, oh, good. Katie, Katie, what do you think? What They're you pretty think? brutal over They're there with politicians and, with celebrities. politicians and celebrities. Do you think it's okay? Do and do you okay? think that okay? vulgar comments and, vulgar and racist comments, comments should be put in the same comments. category? We want your opinion. We want your opinion. Well, any, any comments where you're putting someone down, regardless whether it's on television or just face-to-face -face at work, at home, personally, I don't, you know, um, I personally don't think it's a good thing. It's very sort of demeaning. It, 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 but, you know, the um, thing is, from, from my perspective, if someone was to call me a name, um, I, pers I wouldn't take it personally because I know they're just projecting how they truly feel about themselves. There's something behind that, that they, they feel about themselves. It's a projection. And I don't necessarily disagree with that. The, the question is, uh, you know, part of that question for us, Katie, and this is a hot topic over here right now, is should the media, TV stations, radio stations, should they Take away shows when people make or do inappropriate things, when they're being bad role models, when they're going over the out of the ethical models. Should the station publish uh, punish them, or should that be the choice of the American people who can choose to tune in or tune it out, or the British people? Or the British people. Yeah. Um, okay, this is my own personal opinion. If yep, that's what a, we want. Okay, I yeah. Well, I okay. Well, I just want to quickly say I don't watch television. I have had no idea of everything you just shared. I had no idea about. I don't watch television. I have no idea what's going on in the news politically or anything. Okay, but with regards to the question you're asking me, 
um, I would say for the people not to watch because what you what anybody focus on they feed and what I find with the majority of people in the world today they love drama um, it's very much um, it sort of takes them away from having to face and deal with their own personal issues um, and so therefore if there's a program on television that people don't like don't watch it simple as that really um, and soon the TV companies will take it off because no, they've got no viewers. Okay. Well, I so, so you're saying leave it up to the leave it up to the people to decide. It's not the station's place. It's not the station's place. Yeah, I believe people have the power. Well, and I I, I would agree. I, 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 would I would agree. agree. I, I would agree. So, so now my question for you is, as we get into the part of the session, is in this first, the rest of this first segment, um, I invite you to share something with our listeners that's going to, uh, interestingly, you say you don't believe in a box. I always call this take them outside their box, take them outside of their limitations. I'd like you to share a concept, an idea, something that you have discovered that can help my audience expand into their greater self. Can you do that for us, Katie? Can you do that for us, Katie? <laughs> um, sorry, could you put that in a, a little bit of a simpler way for me? Because I like simple. I like simple. Stretch their comfort zones. Stretch their comfort zones. Right. How okay. Would you, uh, yeah. Would you, yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Well, I, I, my, from my own um, research on myself, um, you're talking about unconditional love. I love myself unconditionally. And from this, from my experience, my research in this, I have found, and I, um, I, I'm totally aware that I create my own reality. Okay, so um, for a lot of, for a lot of people I speak to, to actually even to go there with this conversation about being, being the creator of my reality, um, and basically everything that's going on in the world at some, some. Um, from my perspective, I have actually created that. I have actually, uh, I am responsible for what's going on in the world, although I am not actually, um, how can I put it, because um, for the most part of my life I lived in fear, and so I was carrying a fear vibration, living in a fear vibration, and that v vibration was sending out and I was attracting, creating fear-based experiences. And in order for me to, until I got to a point where I started loving myself and loving myself without condition, no rules, unconditionally. Um, and once I stepped into that, and, it, it, and I say stepped into it, I mean it's a continuous journey because I'm forever evolving as a human being. So everything's changing within me, but loving myself unconditionally is like being speaking my truth um, and doing what feels right for me in every given moment. That's how I live my life. So it's um, this is where I say, you know, I don't I don't think inside a box. I don't follow any rules as such. I, I don't follow any man-made rules. I follow. Uh, the, I would say the laws of nature, because I'm I'm an evolved being, forever evolving. So, uh, so uh, when, when if somebody were to come with you, and I don't know, do you know. do some kind of healing? Are you a practitioner of some kind? Do you work with people to help them reach this po uh, this place? Um. Well, even if, well, I, 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 I sort of talk about it in subtle ways, depending on, you know, who I'm talking to, but 24-7, really, I could go to a shop, I could talk to somebody over the counter and have, you know, just a, a, an opening up conversation. Um, I, I am actually a kinetic chain release practitioner as well, which, um, which ultimately corrects the leg length difference and brings the body back into balance, but it also works on all levels, energetically and physically. Um, so, you know, the, um, and that I can have these sorts of conversations with people going more into themselves and um, basically helping 
reminding people about their self-talk and how they actually talk to themselves. Uh, you know, the, the sort of conversations we have when nobody else is around and how we talk to ourselves. Um, yeah, that, yes, I did. So basically, yes, I do. <laughs> yes, you do, and that's okay. Uh, you, that's you know, okay. you're, you're uh, you talking know, to somebody who is also... Who is also an external processor. An external so processor. I get that sometimes get that you sometimes answer a question by talking it through out loud, and that's okay. And that's okay. Yeah. That's so, right. so what I want to ask you here is, tell me what the name of this thing is that you that you practice again, and can you explain it a little bit more? This is something you studied or something you created. Share this with. Uh, it's, I've not heard of it. And I would love you to share more about this particular system with our audience. Oh, what, the kinetic chain release? Yes. Yeah. It's, yes. okay, it's, um, it's, a, it's a series of very gentle stretches and mobilizations, um, which when performed in a particular order, a little bit like the combinations of a safe, um, when you get to the very end, it sort of unlocks and all the various different points. Uh, it unlocks and releases the body. So it's also working with the, our connected tissue um, as well as the various different points on the body. And connected tissue is a fantastic, it's an amazing, um, everybody has connective tissue in our bodies, but it, it can't be picked up on MRI, M, MRI or X-ray. Um, and so um, it's a very interesting part of us that we have. It's, it's like, um, you know, People talk about the web of life, you know, the web out there. But for me, the connective tissue is the web in here. And it's, um, it sort of acts as a shock absorber. But what it does within, at a, a DNA level, we actually hold and store memories um, from past trauma, um, which unfortunately, as I said, because it can't be picked up um, through MRI or X-ray, uh, a lot of it is still trapped within our bodies and most people don't realise or aren't aware of it. Um, and so through this, through the um, sort of the connect, kinetic chain release, and there's other courses you can do as well, CTR, connected tissue release courses. You get to learn more about your connected tissue and, um, and how you can actually release you know, release a lot of trauma um, through applying these techniques. So, my question to you now is, have, oh, and now we have our music coming in. So, we'll be right back with Katie West. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds, Ohm Times. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Tune in to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World with me, host Robin Fritz, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern. I'll cover personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice, and more, all to help you tap your own intuitive and healing skills. No ifs, ands, or buts. 
Mother, Mother Ocean. Hi, I'm Jimmy Buffett. West Indian manatees are one of the most unique animals on Earth, and we're still finding out so many new things about them. The manatees are endangered, and many of them are killed or injured each year because of watercraft collisions or other human activities. You can help save these gentle marine mammals. For free tips on what you can do, call Save the Manatee Club at 1-800-432-JOIN. Thank you. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Dr. Kevin Show here on Ohm Times, where we challenge everything and everyone. I'm Dr. Kevin, and my guest this week is Katie West. You can find out more about Katie West by actually coming to facebook.com backslash mydrkevin. Uh, you'll see uh, her websites and descriptions of Katie there. You can make sure you like like me while you're visiting uh, and you can leave your comments there if you would like to ask Katie anything or myself or just be part of the conversation. You can also call in at 202-570-7057. Again, that's 202-570-7057. And we can um, make sure that uh, we answer your questions or share your thoughts. Uh, so Katie, welcome back. So Katie, welcome back. Hi. <laughs> Hello. So now, are you familiar so, now, are you with familiar something with called rolfing? Rolfing? Uh, not really. No, I've heard about it once, but I don't know what it is. No. Well, it's very interesting. It's something that I, I very strongly believe in and recommend to my clients that they should check out. Uh, it's like the trifecta of chiropractor is taking care of the skeletal system, massage takes care of the muscles, and rolfing takes care of the connective tissues. And that's why I asked. That's why I asked. Ah, I see. Okay. It's a whole study of connective tissues, and it talks about how the myofascia will get mismolded if there's been too much trauma, or if there's been an accident or whatever, and that sometimes you actually have to separate it and separate reshape it back into its original back position. Its original position. Yeah. Just that's, you know, and yeah. so okay. I love the concept love of, the concept of we, have, we have stored uh, emotions, emotions, unresolved issues and things like that, because I know that we do that in our body. Um, our it's someone, it's something I agree with you 100%. Uh, and uh, but I've never uh, specifically looked at only that that would be in the connective tissue. So that's very interesting. So in this part of our show, Katie, we um, uh, we ask people to share something that you feel has been misrepresented in the world, to share a truth, something that you think has gotten maybe screwed up, misrepresented intentionally or unintentionally. But if people were to change their perception of this, that it would change their world. What would you like to share with my listeners? Um, I think I would like to share um, the perception of love, actually. Um, now, did you say de perception or deception? Or deception. <laughs> Uh, I think perception, hopefully. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yes, love. Um, when um, I love absolutely every single person on the planet unconditionally. Now, a lot of my friends at first couldn't really get that or grasp that, but as they've over the years, they see very much that I do love everyone unconditionally. Um, so unconditional love with regards to love, which is with conditions. Um, it's, I just want to, I suppose wanted to shift that perspective because so many people misunderstand it. Um, unconditional love is, Okay, from, from my point of view, it's uh, unconditional love is that pure isness state. 
it's that zero point energy place that I believe we all have that zero point energy place within each of us, which is that point of creation where creation starts, you know, the first thought or the first feeling or whatever, you know, that comes in. And from there, an inspired idea comes out of that and then we go on and then we create whatever it is we're creating. Um, and so, but the uncon unconditional love um, is loving someone just for who they are. Like, for example, Dr. Kevin, I love you unconditionally. Okay, I accept you truly for who you are in this moment right now because I know that everything that has gone on with you, like, for example, say, say, for example, you were to call me a really horrible name or whatever, just say you did. Okay, now I wouldn't take that personally because I would only take that personally if I believed that to be true about myself or perhaps somewhere along the line, you know, I felt that uh, perhaps because I used to think I wasn't good enough. Now, that I was really strong in that. I really, truly felt I wasn't good enough for anybody or anything. I wouldn't amount to anything because I was told that. And I believed it because so many people said it to me. I thought it must be true. But I've come through that now and I know I am good enough. But what I'm saying is, but loving myself unconditionally is basically living with no rules. That, that I've li Living with no limitations. I don't limit myself anymore. And, and I go with the flow of, of, of my own... Um, I go with the flow of what feels right for me in every given moment. Now, again, a lot of people find that very difficult. What, you go and do what you want. No, no, I do what feels right for me. If it feels right, I will do it. If it doesn't feel right, I won't do something. Because I know I'm always being put at the right place at the right time with the right people by doing that. But by following what everybody else is telling me they think I should do, I'm going against my flow. Okay, I'm going, I'm doing whatever, this is what I used to do. I used to try and I used to do everything everybody else told me that I should do. And instead of um, standing in my truth, living my truth and doing what felt right for me. And so I've come away from that now, and, and I live that. And through living that, you know, a lot of people have gone, but a lot of new people have come in. Um, and that's, that's how it is. So that uncondition loving myself unconditionally is not, I don't place any limits on myself. There are no limits. Um, I'm not, I don't, I, I don't live in um, fear. Sometimes a fear, uh, an experience will come in and I'll think, oh, scary, scary, scary Mary or whatever. But I'll look at it and go, well, what is this telling me? I won't run. I used to. I used to run away from fear, think it, you know, sweep it under the rug and hope it went away. But now I face it. What is this experience trying to remind me of? It's trying to remind me of something. You know, remind me that I am not that or remind me of that I am strong, that I can get through this. You know, it's for, there's forever something that's there to, you know, there's always uh, what's the, what, a lesson, I suppose, is the word I want to use. Opportunity. Um, opportunity. Opportunity. I love that word. Thank you. Well, you know, and I, 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 I feel like... Like when stuff comes to us, we can choose to, it, it can be challenging, but we can choose to make it an opportunity or a lesson or learn something from it. It doesn't make it not challenging, but it gives it a, a different perspective, a different flavor, a different, uh, it shifts the experience you're having. Yeah. Yes, that's right. By looking at it, I can make a choice whether I want to do it or not, as opposed to react and, and run. 
Yeah. Well, I'm I'm a big fan I'm, of I'm responding, fan versus of responding versus reacting. Versus reacting. And, and not fight. giving your power Some away. Fight. Power away. Exactly. Some yeah. people, it's a fight or flight response. You know. So, uh, so here's my question for you, because uh, you're not the the first person that that talks from the place of you know being um, unconditionally loving and unconditionally loving to all things. And the question that I hear that comes up most often, and I know how I answer it, but I want to see how you answer it. Okay. Which is, does that mean you have no boundaries? Where do boundaries come in? Um, <clears throat> boundaries. What? Okay. I yeah. I suppose I have no boundaries, but I'm so committed to my feelings. My, because, because my feeling, my intuition is what connects me to all that is. I'm in you, myself and, um, thing is, I don't believe out there is out there. I believe it's in here. So I'm at one with it. So by, my feelings are connected to all that is. And so by, and it's, I will not act on a feeling unless it feels 100% the right thing. Thing to do or not do depending on what the feeling is suggesting so well I guess so I, I guess but my question to you is is let's say somebody somebody is disrespectful to you and you understand that it's about them but would you set a boundary let's 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 make it a very let's make it a very physical thing somebody comes up and slaps you would you say don't slap me again say don't slap me again or would you say okay well go ahead okay well go ahead um Someone come up and slap me. <laughs> that hasn't happened for years. <laughs> um, okay, if somebody came over and slapped me, um, well, I'd talk to them and ask them, you know, wh what's the root cause of why they did that? I wouldn't sort of turn around and... Yeah, I would, I would want to try and find out what the root of the reason why they felt you know, that they needed to do that. I'd, I'd talk about it with them. I'm very and if somebody, is, and if somebody is willing to talk about it talk and about maybe, it, explore, maybe it, explore it, uh, I can see that that I could be that a way to deal with it. Like, so why, with it. Like, why did you hit me? What was what was all that about? And, all that about? and mm. But it's, if it's they an, just... An interesting... If they just mm. Sorry, Kevin, talk over you there. No, it's okay. I, I, okay. No, it's okay. It's, I find it a little bit difficult to answer that question. And the reason why is um, living in the space of unconditional love, the, the pure is the space, fear cannot exist where there's unconditional love. Because how I see it, there is only love. It can be experienced unconditionally or with condition. Now, somebody who lives in love with conditions, where there's you know, um, you know, where they place limitations, conditions on themselves. Um, so they live in conditional love. Now, conditional uh, fear is um, uh, fear is like the, the reaction to conditional love, but it's not a reaction to unconditional love because that fear cannot exist where there is. So what I'm trying to say is. To imagine somebody coming up to me now hitting me, I don't see that as a something that's possible because of the vibration that I give out. I don't attract, create that experience. Because by following my feelings, since I have committed to doing that 10 years now, I'm always, I've always been taken out of harm's way. Like if I'm in a room full of people and all of a sudden a feeling comes in and it says, Kate, leave the room now, or just remove yourself, I'll go. And then normally quite what happens, 10 minutes later, someone will come in, there's a big commotion. Every time I leave where I live and go away for a, a while, there's always something huge has happened. I'm always taken out of harm's way when, because I, I stay true and follow my feelings. 
I, so that's why I just find that a little bit difficult to answer. That's why I was a little bit, you know, find that difficult Take to answer. answer. Well, you know, there's uh, there's been an age old debate an age which, old says, debate, which says, if you're, if you're taking care of yourself, care of yourself you, can you can unconditionally love somebody, love somebody, but still set a boundary. Set say, a boundary. you know, if somebody you comes and stays on your couch, stays on your couch and never leaves, it's and okay for you to say, I love you, but I need you I not in my you, space. Not in my space. <laughs> yeah, That's it, setting it, a boundary. It, 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 setting a boundary. Yeah, it, I, I, um, I can understand what you're saying. As I said in the description, um, I experienced life sort of backwards. Now, I don't, I don't have to tell people to leave me. They leave me because I'm... I'm very direct, tell it like it is, and I speak my truth the whole time. I mean, you know, I had no idea what I was going to say today. I, I, I just allow what is to come out of my mouth. It just comes out of my mouth. I'm like this 24-7. And so a lot of people, have, um, you know, I'm, I, I will come out with things, and most of the time I come out with things, and I don't mean it, mean mean for it to come out like it does, but it, I, but people, friends, people have said to me before um, that I'm very, I'm very intense, and not just that I say things that they didn't want to hear, and so therefore that's people that have gone in my life and have come back recently have said to me, you know, what you said to me back then, I wasn't ready to hear it. But now, on reflection, I can understand what you were saying. It was through the ex their experiences they've had since I've not seen them. And they've come back and said, oh, my God, you were so right back then. But I, you know, they had to go away from me to have a, a more of a ex life experience. And now they're, they're coming back because they realize what I said back then I sort of planted a seed and they went off and nurtured it and it grew and grew and grew. Well, I, I and well, I, we have I, I, we have our music coming up. Music coming up. <laughs> so we're going to be back in just a minute with Katie West, who's going to continue to talk about living oneness and unconditional love. Conscious Connection, Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. The number one reason girls drop out of school in Sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hi, I'm Kelly Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance, Mondays at 9pm Eastern Time. This is why you work so hard to pay the mortgage. Because home is more than four walls and a roof. It's that porch swing and a summer evening. It's everybody over for Sunday dinner and your family sleeping in their own beds at night. Making home affordable is a free government resource that can make paying the mortgage easier. Call 888-995-HOPE or visit makinghomeaffordable.gov. Good night, Mama. This is why. Brought to you by the U.S. Treasury, HUD, and the Ad Council.
Hello, 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 and welcome back to the last segment of the Dr. Kevin Show. This week, we have Katie West. Katie West lives oneness and unconditional love, and she loves assisting people who are interested in giving themselves back to themselves, helping them restore their own inner balance, peace, joy, and harmony. She says if a box existed, then she would love to talk outside of it. But in Katie's world, there is no box. She has an interesting perception of life, and some could say she sees and experiences everything backwards. Living life from this perspective has had its ups and downs, as you can quite well imagine, but the message she would love to share is there's nothing wrong with the world. Everything is perfectly ticking away nicely, and there is order in the chaos. You can find out more about Katie West at Group of One, and that's the number one, so group of and the number one dot org. You can also call in and ask Katie or myself any questions you would like or share comments at 202-570-7057. Or you can come to facebook.com backslash mydrkevin. And you'll find all of Katie's information there, as well as you can leave a comment. And I will share that on the air. So, Katie, you, uh, 10 years ago, had this epiphany about unconditional love. Was there something that triggered that epiphany? Uh, yes, two things, actually. Um, a spiritual one. Um, um, I, I found out that I, um, it was brought to my awareness, my experience, that I was undergoing an indigo crystal transition. Um, and that was the spiritual. And then the, um, I was also uh, diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome. Um, and within one month, this all happened. Um, and it was in the research of Asperger's that I started um, looking at more into that. Um, and that brought me to Einstein's work. And I started to do a bit of research into Einstein's uh, work on um, dimensions and relativity. Um, and that's when I sort of came across... Um, that's then when I realised uh, um, in my research that I actually create, I am the creator of my reality, that ultimately nothing exists. Um, and whatever I choose to focus on, um, I can, you know, if I'm focusing on it with pure intent, I can create and manifest a reality that I desire. And the type of reality I desire is, uh, which most people desire, is world peace. And so, ten years ago, I decided that I'd work towards um, creating world peace by, um, you know, one person at a time, um, creating my own inner peace, and then assisting others to create their own inner peace because I believe by as one one person at a time creates their own inner peace within themselves they're going to create in their own reality their own outer world peace um, and soon the majority minority will become the majority and before you know it tipping point and woohoo world peace <laughs> that uh, basically in the simplest way that that's what I've been doing for the past 10 years. So let me ask you this question. Ask you this question. Uh, we uh, uh, ask uh, you, you're, you're pronouncing it as um, as Berger's over here. People are going to be more familiar with the term Asperger's. That's how they say it. It's just a pronunciation thing. But just for people that might get confused briefly. You researched it. It was a pivotal point. There was a label that they stapled to your head and you wanted to find out what it meant. Yeah. Um, what did you find 
as the greatest discrepancy between what people thought about Asperger's versus what you discovered? Well, fascinating, actually, because when, when I was telling people, they told me to be quiet, told me not to tell anybody, because, um, um, you know, it's on the autistic spectrum. Um, and, yeah, they just said, don't tell too many people about it. It's fear of the unknown, isn't it? I mean, and I, and I said, well, you know, I, there's a, a lot of people that have have been diagnosed with this and other diagnosis with, you know, AD, whatever. You know, um, it's... Um, I, I, I believe talking about it will help other people perhaps understand themselves sometimes or you know I mean since since I've told people about it I mean I don't tell people all the time for quite a long time I didn't mention it at all just because I don't attach myself to a label I am I am me at the end of the day this is why I don't need a label I don't need to put myself you know label myself with anything I don't label myself with anything um, I'm just me um, but in conversation, or for example, just recently, um, I flew to Tasmania, uh, first time I've ever been on a flight on my own, 10,500 miles. And so I did, I actually, I used my label so I could have me and assist just because, you know, I, and I did in order to get that little bit of extra service that I'd be okay because it felt right to do that. Um, so, I use it when it feels right to use it, um, but I don't. I don't ever use it as an excuse, which I, I have sometimes um, come across people that do use their labels as an excuse not to do things, or attention or whatever. But um, <clears throat> you know, and that that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying there is. You know, I'm just explaining it from my perspective. Um, so that was the the one thing that you know I got from what other people were saying was don't tell anyone. They were almost embarrassed that I had it. Um, one one a very good friend of mine used to call me Mad Kate. Anyway, as soon as he found that out, he stopped calling me Mad Kate, and I was quite upset because I loved that he called me Mad Kate. It was like a term of endearment, you know, him calling me mad. I love that, but you stop that now. So, so there was a lot of, a lot of, you know, weirdness that went on. But the, one of the fascinating things, and I am so grateful that I found out about that I had this label, is because I hear literal. Now, when I talk to people about it, and they say, "Well, give me something that I can actually, so I can sort of understand it a little bit more. What's different about you than?" me and I said well first and foremost I hear literal and I said so what that means I'll give you an example uh, the majority of people that I speak to they talk in the second and third person they don't use the word I when they're talking about things um, like like for example Kevin if you and I were chatting and you turn around to me and say oh you know when you go skiing and straight away, I would think, I don't go skiing. How, why are you telling me I go skiing? When normally, most people use the word you and we as a general term. Oh, you know when you go skiing. You know, but for me, I used to react. And I used to, re I used to go with him, react, say to myself, well, I don't do that. And I've missed the whole conversation because I still be focusing on why are they telling me I go skiing when I've never skied in my life. Uh, so Interesting. Now, Interesting. Now the difference is, I can when I'm very awake, wide awake, as opposed to tired, um, and I can be around people now, and they can talk to me, and use the you and we in a general term, because I I translate within. Um, seconds in my head whether they mean you we or I <laughs> <laughs> so so that's um yeah 
That's that's one of the best things. I, I'm so pleased that I have that label because I would never have found that out. And now I can interact and communicate with people without taking, you know, without misunderstanding what they're saying to me. And I think that people oftentimes people do, often that, do that you, us, we you, thing. Us. Because it's supposed to be an inclusiveness, create a familiarity, you know, it's a, it, it's, it's meant to be a, a language, a relationship language thing, which if you have a very literal mind is, is frustrating because as you said, you get lost in the, oh, what do you mean? I don't ski. What do you mean? I don't ski. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Now I, so now I, I am a poster child for ADD, child ADHD. For ADD. I, have ADD. I have several books out on ADD. I look at ADD as part of the evolutionary process, broadening the bandwidth of humanity. I do not see it as a disease disorder or disability. Um, and in my work, uh, and I've been working with ADD individuals since the late 90s, I try to teach the people I work with the difference between an identifier and a label because labels tend to be boxy. They tend to put you in some kind of box. If you have this label, if you have the label of Asperger's or Asperger's, as you say, um, then there are certain, uh, certain assumptions that are going to be made. There are certain things that you will or will not be asked to do, or there's all sorts of just cascading um, limitations that will show up because of that. And so I always tell people, you know, when I say, if I say something about thinking, feeling that somebody may be ADD or that I call them my kids, that you're one of my kids, I am identifying a way in which you think and interact in the world that helps me interact with you. It doesn't limit you, it helps me support you. Do you see Asperger's uh, or Asperger's as something that you would still qualify as um, a disability or a, a, a label of some kind? Or would you be more of in that camp of this just identifies certain things about me like I'm very literal? Um, okay, I've forgotten the question. <laughs> um, I, I, hold on, let me think. Um, I, I see it very, I see very much um, uh, ADD, Asperger's, um, I see them all as gifts. As you said, um, I, I believe that um, it's, it's very much, you know, the indigo crystal transition period, isn't it? Indigo children are very, um, uh, most indigo children have the labels of, um, you know, these labels. Um, and I believe we are, we are the, the, those ones propelling the world forward. Um, what I've, again, in my sort of, I say, re uh, I say experience more so than research, but people that I've met on the spectrum, uh, one thing that we all have in common is we very live very much in the present moment and that um, sort of um, it's sort of living like time doesn't exist it's you know we, we act in the now we're very you know get up and do things or you know very very sort of acting in our now present moment it's very uh, how can I put it we're not conditioned to be a set way, and every time we try to be, you know, or authority, or someone tries to condition us to be a certain way, it's it's really, as you said before, frustrating, and really, it's, it's we're going against uh, who we truly know ourselves to be. So it's so yeah, I I truly believe you know everyone that has a a label is um yeah it's a gift we we have a gift and i but, but then again i look at the world and i look at humanity and i believe we are 
every single person on the spectrum the way I see it. We're all on the spectrum. Well, I'm a strong believer that strong everybody, believer that, everybody uh, that comes into this planet, into this planet uh, has, the uh, has the ability to be a gift to, be to the a planet, planet, to humanity, planet, to everyone that they touch. I also, I also believe that they don't always that give, that don't that always give that gift. They don't always unwrap it. They, they don't, don't always share it. it. They, they don't, don't ever, share they don't it. always. They don't ever, they don't discover it within themselves. They uh, they waste their lives on uh, living in other people's version of who they are. Yeah, but that's a gift in itself because it's the contrast, isn't it? By somebody not perhaps expressing their gift are actually gifting somebody else to find out who they truly are. It's, oh, it's like other people can find a gift find from it, it. And, and we all come in to play different roles each time we come in play, which is why I don't believe in inherent bad people or good people. Just people that are having an experience which the world judges. Katie, thank you. Thank you for making the effort. Give my love to give to jolly old England, and I'll have to see if we can cross paths next time I'm across the pond. Most definitely. Thank you very much, Kevin. Thank you. I've enjoyed it.